Welcome back to the True Church of Jesus Christ with his Latter-day Saint. And in this episode, we're going to talk about grafting ourselves back onto the tree of life in amidst of adversities, trials, and sufferings. Uh, this episode was kind of inspired by Rudolf Steiner and uh, things I was reading earlier about how other people have fallen off of the way. And being in this time and space, is there a God or is there enlightenment? Is there truth? A lot of people have failed the path. And uh, I'm going to talk more about myself, too, and my struggles, because the scriptural truth is all fact. The way is straight and narrow, and few be that enter. But they don't know why life is in trouble. So I've been given this perspective. I've won the goal. So life is all about receiving God consciousness, enlightenment, obtaining the experience, now, why do you want to attain the experience? So we'll go to 2 Corinthians 13, verse 5. Test yourselves to see whether you're living in faith. Examine yourselves. Perhaps you yourselves don't realize that Jesus Christ is in you. So the great I am. Unless, of course, you failed the challenge. Now, the challenge. A lot of people have failed the challenge for their divinity. That's what this is all about. We're given a big promise that God will give us his only begotten son in the midst of us. So that's the holy comforter in uh, uh, Matthew chapter 11. Come to me, all who are weary and find life burdensome. We'll get this holy spirit or this comforter within us by prayer. See, there's a way to do it. There's a way to God, just like there's a way to do everything else in life. But this way is difficult. And the reason why it's difficult is because People don't really think that God's knowledge is true or that God's spirit is true or they don't have enough understanding about God's spirit. One of the biggest misconceptions about God's spirit is that it entangles itself in this material world. So a lot of misconceptions about uh, God's ways from false preachers, false doctrines. You know, like you could say in the, in the, the Buddhist world right now, is very un unenlightened so you can't obtain your divinity following just anybody that's also another thing too is certain people <laughs> are kind of like different brands of you could say alcohol and everybody wants the best brand so out in the world you know you can trust certain people so trusting our lives to somebody is something we're gonna have to do because if you find yourself in a situation, you're going to have to take up wisdom, no matter what. So you're going to have to take up wisdom if you want to get a job. And what's the wisdom? It's just basically going to the place, doing your activities there, and knowing what you're doing in order to eat, sleep, drink, and be merry. <laughs> Life is very simple. So the path to God also, see, there's basically things that we have to clear up and clarify. Because the mind itself comes on fire, ignorant, depressed, miserable. And the reason why a lot of God, people have failed the path is because their minds have been too miserable and angry when adversity happens. So God planted his I am, his seed, in the midst of mortality, in the midst of death, darkness, and illusion. So that's the true teaching of God. That this plane of life doesn't exist. So that's the ultimate form of mysticism. But I exist. And I exist within the midst of you. John 14, verse uh, 21. If you follow my commandments, I will make myself known to you. So that's what we're looking for in life. We're looking for God realization. So the only reason why we look for God realization is to obtain this pearl of great price, which is our divinity. So what does our divinity inquire? In the Colburn Bible, we could have more of an understanding of what we're trying to do and why we're following Jesus Christ, the Word of God. Because this is from the voice of God in the Colburn Bible chapter. So, by this love alone, who knows me in truth, who that, what I am, and knowing me in truth, he participates in my whole being. So by taking up the name of God, the great I am, right? John chapter 10, he's the shepherd. And if by prayer, not taking thought for your life, this is, I'm going to, basically this is a discourse on Matthew chapter 6. 
This is why a lot of people fail. Because in this visible world with your mind and your body, when God plants his seed in you, when you want to take up this pathway of enlightenment, it's just like a seed in the ground. It's going to have to take force to break out. So this pathway of enlightenment is straight and narrow. So Matthew 13, the cares of this world. The cares of this world choke out this inner spirit. So when people get angry at themselves because of their life's failures, or what they think is life's failures anyways. See, that's God pounding his anvil, but people have not risen up their consciousness to a spiritual level. They still think that this mortality is the only thing that exists. And they think that themselves is the ultimate reality. So that's not taking up the truth. That's not taking up the great I am. And that's not participating in my whole being. So following the truth is the only way to lead to me or to graft yourself back onto the tree. But in my situation, right, when this seed was breaking out into my life, uh, in the year 2017, that's when I had, you could say, like, a, right at the beginning, too. So God does things very exacting to people that are awake, you could say, their eyes wide open and spiritual thinking. So I had a weight training accident, quote, unquote. This creation is in the belly of the beast. I didn't know that at the time. Committed to judgment. So men are killing each other out there. But also this refinement, this participating in my being, this trials by the fire. This is why a lot of people fail. Because when I had this accident, right, I was given those trials by the fire to burn away, you could say, my mortal thinking, my mortal body, and the sense of doing something in this time and space. That's why Matthew chapter 6, he says, don't take thought for this life. So even though your life has a personal sense of suffering, you are still in this creation. And you are still called upon not to take thought for your inner sense of life, even though you're angry, miserable, despairing. See, I learned that lifting weights. You could go in there, right? And you could have a good week lifting good, sticking to your diet, right? Everything feels good inside you. You feel like you're accomplishing. Everything is smooth in your mind, clear in your heart. And then when Friday rolls around, right? I, I started avoiding the ideas of the world so to eat and enjoy yourself because I started losing progress all that hard work of plowing the field of the gym for five days turned to nothing if on the weekend there I just did what the world suggested to do and that made me very angry because I started losing progress and I'm a person that just <laughs> sees this like inner sensation of anger <laughs> that's the biggest thing that irritated me is losing progress so that's when I stuck to the diet a little bit more that's why that path is straight and narrow and if you don't have this inner discipline this inner fighting for me see like I wanted to really fight for this uh, sense of doing this right not losing my progress and the more I fought against this doing what is right and just sticking into the right as Confucius says that's taking up wisdom and wisdom grafts you on the branch so you don't have to listen to guys like Arnold Schwarzenegger he doesn't have the uh, copyrights to bodybuilding or anything like that certain men are certain like alcoholic beverages right they have a very good you could say refinement to them a good taste and certain people have knowledge and all at the same time it's universal so what they use is the same thing what everybody else uses the example here is pumping iron everybody in that gym there when Arnie was training all looked the same because they all took the same knowledge and that wisdom grafted them onto the branch of the look of a bodybuilder which is called the look but if you graft yourself with the wisdom of God he grafts you to eternal life to the tree of knowledge that's the eternal tree of God. So that's the idea of taking up the way. Is men are allotted a certain span of time in life. But men entangle their senses too much into this world. So you could still go to the gym. But you can't expect results. Why? 
because this time and space is moving in wisdom. Ah, so you don't have to look, see, as the master says in Matthew chapter 6, do not take thought for the drinking or the eating if you're involved in bodybuilding. So I had to take up that wisdom and bodybuilding at the same time, which was perfect knowledge because you have to fast. It was the absolute perfect knowledge and the perfect way to live physically in this time and space. I found that knowledge out and I vow, see, I fought for that. God tells us too. Here's the next thing in the scripture. Those who seek union with me must first prepare a dwelling place. So this dwelling pr uh, place, right? We hear about this knowledge and the path is straight and narrow. But like going to the gym every day, I stuck to the thing that I knew but was universal. Everybody else knew. And if I just stick to this path that's straight and narrow, yes, it might be difficult trying to do, you know, it's doing the same thing every day, but it's wisdom guiding you because everybody else has done it and achieved those results. So if you stick to this achieving of this result, of this wisdom, you could deny thyself. I live, yet not I. Or basically, like, like he says, take no thought. And while you do this, you're in this creation anyways. And this wisdom and knowledge is guiding you. And by fighting with this, you could strive with this knowledge. And that's what makes, you could say, the bodybuilder. So what you could say in that pumping iron, right? There's that little guy and Arnold was, you know, teaching him how to pose. So that's how that little guy grafts himself into looking like Arnold Schwarzenegger. But here's what men do at the same time. There are two egotistical of themselves he was still looking to arnold to tell him that he was doing things good meanwhile that guy had a perfectly good body grafted to the look but he still looked to other men for approval this inner seeking me now you don't have to look to other men for approval because now you just have this wisdom and that is your inner approval because now you've Graph, you have a certain measure of that knowledge and obtain that look. At least on this path, that's an idea of, like you could say, following physical fitness. And following in this way too was perfect knowledge because you have to fast. And you have to fast as well because it takes energy to graft yourself on this tree. And not taking thought for the things in this life also gives us this perspective of deny thyself, pick up the cross. So picking up the cross is taking this transcendental knowledge, but believing it's true. You have to have faith that this knowledge is true, the knowledge of God and God's way. So this is the fight. You have to be disciplined in this discipline of love and seeking this inner wisdom that cannot obtain union no matter how much they strive god is the god of illumination and i am the god of enlightenment so many guys have failed because they weren't able to take up the name of i am they still wanted their own will and to overcome with their own knowledge so that's more like the fake buddhist knowledge is your own good you see Oh, if I help people here, I could get uh, God's favor. It's not by your works. You have to have faith. Faith and works produces wisdom. So just like the bodybuilders, they don't just sit there eating faith because they have to go there and produce, which is the experience and wisdom. It's blending the two. Faith and applying by prayer and by these little examples of charity a little example of just not being thoughtless grafts ourselves back to the tree day by day but you got to do this when you're alone see that's why a lot of people suffered and they failed as god says because when they're alone in a diseased body or a diseased condition they couldn't find the transcendental i or the one mind or me because this me is not from this realm as Jesus Christ tells us, seek my kingdom. My kingdom is not of this world. That's why by prayer, I live, yet not I. 
Christ lives my life. And if we pray this way, a particular way, then the Spirit of God begins to function our lives. But if the, see, the good thinkers out there have failed themselves because they thought that they were smart and they thought that they had knowledge and that they, they wanted to do something out there in time and space. That's not how this creation works because God's wisdom tells us that matter is an illusion. And all of the matter in you, so that personal sense of you, isn't real. So that's why a lot of people failed as well, because while they're sitting there angry, they haven't practiced God's knowledge and wisdom because they thought it wasn't real while they were suffering. And they weren't able to obtain their enlightenment. See, like me, when I was suffering in time and space, <laughs> I knew enough of the gospel that I'm not in time and space, I'm in the mind of God, and I'm witnessing his external truth. But to me, I still have to find God's truth. I still have to find this one consciousness. And it is the void, the first chapter of Genesis. I didn't know at the time what I was looking for. All I knew was I was just looking for God, but I didn't know how God felt. I didn't know what the experience was like. But other men did. See, God kept that hidden from me. That's this big fire, this test. Do not be afraid by the fiery trials that seem to jar you <laughs> or seem too extreme or whatever. Do not be alarmed because you're partaking now in the sufferings of Christ. Because all men are appointed death. That's the big secret. So when these shakings happen to people's lives, like it happened in myself, a shaking in an accident, where I couldn't lift weights anymore. I couldn't participate in work anymore. See, it's great shaking. Matthew 13 says, yep, yeah, those are the cares. But can you fight for me? Just like I fought going to the gym and applying that knowledge, now I have to fight for God and apply his knowledge. And that was rough and rocky for me. Because you're going to have to use God's knowledge in a broken body or in a diseased mind or when you're angry you're going to have to practice the virtues of patience and study this knowledge while you don't have God. Because I did not have God in the year 2017. What I had was the rough and the rocky. All I had was life's worries. Big time. And to try to find peace when I didn't have God was using knowledge. Struggling for this way. I had to still acknowledge the fact that I was in God and I now in this broken condition when the mind is on fire and yes not participating in life is very painful it, it creates a lot of suffering that's also the doctrine of the Buddha it was very easy for me to understand because I was advanced in spiritual knowledge that just because I'm away from the weight room that's not my life but what men fail is because when they're away from the weight room, they think it's their life. And that's what creates attachment and suffering. And they're not in the great I am anymore. They're in the basically the branch that's cut off. So John chapter 15. Man's a branch cut off and can do nothing without me grafting themselves back on. So it's easy for me to understand these doctrines because even when I was away... <laughs> It was more like a relief because I wasn't going to the gym anymore. And I couldn't in a broken body. So there was no point in putting my mind in there as a sense of life. I had to find me. Seek the kingdom of God. And now use the knowledge. See, like waking up every day. And instead of being angry and like, oh, I can't do this, or all oh, my aches and pains, or all oh, my misery, all oh, thy, my, thy, my, my, my. You see, oh my and oh me, that is the false ego. This oh my and oh me has to be overcome by I live, yet not I, fear not. I have overcome the world. Oh, but you're sitting there suffering. Yeah, I know. That's why you have to struggle for me, as God's saying in the scripture. And that path is straight and narrow. So just like going to the gym, it's going to be a big struggle to lift those weights. Sitting at home in your condition 
it's going to be in a bigger struggle now to search inside yourself for the one consciousness while you're in time and space and you're now meant to practice patience see god's way grafting ourselves back on the tree the virtues of counteracting anger so why the other sages and mages failed because they were still angry in time and space they did not observe the birds and how they're not angry sewing around why because they had a personal sense of self and that they had to go around and eat they could not sacrifice or surrender unto me you are just like the birds you're not separate from them that's what he says fear not do you think that I could clothe you O oh, week of faith and you're gonna have to struggle with that you're gonna have to fight for me so I was sitting here with nothing with these teachings yes I had to struggle for me and not go out into the world now because that's also the big challenge matter is an illusion it doesn't exist and I was given that early in my life and I had to stick to that principle no matter in a broken condition or a broken mind on top of now in anger confusion seeking me by what the first commandment now so that's what takes us out of the weight room mentally I don't have attachments to the world this me is invisible so that's another thing you could practice you don't have to put this burning mind on anyone or anything that's why Matthew chapter 6 was so important just observe you are in this system and I can take care of you just like I take care of the birds you don't have to walk around like the wisdom of Solomon if you use this wisdom in prayer you'll have more wisdom than Solomon ever dreamed of but you have to seek me and not take thought for my life and seek the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness that's exactly the chapter so that's what we're dedicating ourselves to God consciousness but in the year 2017 the way was rough and rocky and my body was destroyed but my mind was not and I had to follow the way no I had to fight and who did I have to fight I had to fight friends family and my sense of self and survival it was all about survival mode now no one's gonna take care of me because I just worked 10 or 15 years out in the world it's very difficult this way because you have to now still in this time and space but use wisdom just like I use wisdom in the gym that grafted me onto the branch of bodybuilding I had to use wisdom to graft me back onto the tree of God in this condition it didn't matter that's what taking the name is and I am the great shepherd John chapter 10 I didn't know anything about a John chapter 10 yet this is the year 2017 I'm, I'm not enlightened you see I didn't I, I was fighting for enlightenment but the people my ex at the time she didn't know I was fighting for enlightenment my friends at the time they had no clue I was fighting for enlightenment family not a clue see no one knows what I was fighting for so I'll continue on what we're fighting for here I am the God of illumination so here's what it's worth fighting for a long time ago God consciousness so reading the Colburn Bible after God gave that to me in the year 2022 from sticking on this way yep I have to fight the world too it wanted me to go outside and get a job well God says come to me I overcome the world see that's why the mages and the sages failed they didn't take or they didn't believe in Matthew chapter 6 enough that God is in the midst of you and he supplies your needs because you're in this creation and it doesn't matter what that's the promise so that's for me I had enough spiritual knowledge to say yes I am invisible in this creation is just moving on like a bull and the idea here is we're the matador that just lifts up the curtain and the bull goes right on that's Matthew 6 do not take thought you are the matador 
and this creation with your body and miserable mind in it is going along with God's wisdom. God pulls this creation by his wisdom. That's what Matthew 6 means. And you have to surrender to me. That's also the secret of secrets in the Bhagavad Gita and all of God's transcendental religion is Matthew chapter 6 is self surrender. Do not take thought for any of this mental activity that you're experiencing inside your mind because that's the tonic of flesh. How many people think that's real knowledge and wisdom? They're going to have to do it because that's what I had to fight for while I was in a broken body. Couldn't go out there in the hospital. Why? Matter's an illusion. It's just the tonic of flesh. Do you have the balls to graft yourself back onto the tree when your body's riddled in cancer or your mind's destroyed? That's what you're going to have to fight for. The world is useless to you now. My kingdom is what you seek. Oh, but that, see the people, well, that's a little crazy. What didn't matter to me? My life was over at that time, but I had another activity, which is seeking the kingdom of God. See, everyone has thoughts. Everyone has will. And everyone has feelings. And just because I wasn't engaged in the weight room, I was still engaged in God. Very good, Lord. While the others were not grafting themselves on the tree, but they were probably witnessing me strange broke unemployed what is he doing oh this great fight now you see and what do you get would you here's god's scriptures this is the last verse six, <clears throat> sorry verse 61 would you like to know what you're fighting for the ultimate state of man when he's finally reached his goal when he has entered into his inheritance of divinity it is a state of glory transcending anything conceivable by him during an earthbound existence. His consciousness expands to embrace everything, all that ever was or will ever be. He sees all and he knows all. So that's why I was willing to, like the master Jesus Christ, willing to get mocked, scoffed, beaten, and crucified. Why? Because you people don't believe in God consciousness and that's what he's fighting for, the crown. That's what we fight for, the promise of God, God consciousness. Isn't that John 14, verse 21? If you follow the commandments, pretty simple, Lord. Don't love the weight room. Love me. I'm invisible. And I'll graft you onto my tree and reveal myself, which is enlightenment, the real contact with God and Jesus Christ. So while you're in these pathetic conditions, like I was in, it's not just about boasting about God's knowledge. God helps you, like he says in Matthew 6. Why? Because, oh, there was a Jesus Christ. <laughs> and he did come down, and this is the gospel truth, as they say. Why? Because there is such a thing as enlightenment. And who gives? John chapter 1. See, now, in, when I struggled and strived against the world, against, you could say, like, the welfare office trying to get me to work because I legitimately couldn't work. My body was screwed or else I would love to work. I had to overcome the world. And only by taking the name of God. See, people didn't know me that much, too. I, I lifted weights like a savage and worked all of my life. I just had a fiery trial to be refined like gold. That's what I learned in the Book of Hermas. To learn all these scriptures and to gain my divinity that's only in Jesus Christ I am the doorway to enlightenment but you got to fight for it just like I did this is the story of the this is the real self-realization it's not really anything to boast about because while I was sitting here I didn't have anything to eat you have to see God in the scriptures after I realized that he conditions you to be put into situations where you have to fast and not take thought for you. You literally, that's the, that was the whole point of Matthew 6. You literally cannot take thought for your life. That's a commandment. I was taught that in the year like 2013. So this is a, a 
a preparation, as God says. You have to prepare a vessel. I was prepared in the year 2017. So that's the fiery trial. I had an accident. That's what Peter says. These fiery trials, I didn't understand at the time what I was going through. But I knew what I was struggling for. What other people didn't know is this principle of not taking thought for my life because God is here already and always has been. That's what Lao Tzu teaches too. This God that you claim, it's not, it doesn't have a name. It's always been here. <laughs> and that's what we're, that's why the not taking thought part, Matthew 6, you are already in God creation. So while all this happened, God prepared a vessel. Year 2017, had the fiery trial. Everyone just thought I was a loser. I mean, are you kidding me? I had lesser individuals call me things that... <laughs> you know, after running home from work, lifting weights like a savage in 10 years, working, I don't know, 55 hours a week, I've been called by lesser beings worse things than you imagine. That's also a part of the scriptures in the material forest in Bhagavad Gita. We're taking a body that gets spit on, beaten, 40 lashes, and crucified for this way. So I was down for the lashings of others. It didn't matter what the world said. I was willing to live out on the street for this. It didn't matter to me what I had to do. I didn't care if the welfare officer would kick me out of welfare. I didn't care if I was going to lose my place. I still had to not take thought for my life. So the You Be Ready YouTube channel helped me greatly because there's a message there called My True Bride. And God sees us smashing our heads over this principle because he sees us not, he's, we're trying to follow the way to our dearest hearts and souls while it seems the whole world is plunging us down the toilet. That's why that message was huge. That's why these other YouTube channels were huge. That's why God is real. <laughs> because I'm following that stream. This is the idea now of obtaining the pearl of great price. Infinite powers of perceptions contains all, yet he is above all. He is beyond, see this above all. This is why it's very important. When you're down here suffering, God consciousness, the void, takes you above all time and space so you can experience no suffering the comfort that's how you experience the comforter that i wasn't receiving at the time i was receiving more of this bashing my head on the table and trying to follow the way regardless regard for me it was just regardless i didn't care if i was going to get kicked out i didn't care if i had to eat crap out of my ass i was not going to take thought for my life and and just see <laughs> and my goal was god that's what my goal was after when all of this went down. And it worked. And God, listen, yes, I don't have a job, but God somehow kept me in my place. Why? Because the principles are true. God's promises are true. While the whole world was trying to throw me out, somehow I'm still here. Very strange. I still have my place. It's been six years. I did my taxes. Six years. And I made $8,000. That's nothing. They give you just enough. And I had to work, fight, and struggle under this way, under poverty, sickness, and disease. But I overcome all of this. This is how I overcame the disease of mortality. You receive immortality. That's Brother Paul's gospel. Now I can understand the corruptible I was just in a corruptible mortal condition and using God's knowledge enlighten my consciousness to God's knowledge so now I could bury myself in the Gospels because I've been give, given a ticket to understand what I've just been received which is what <laughs> the pearl of great price that's like Matthew 13 again now again you've been given a spirit that's what St. Paul's Gospel is about you've been given a spirit that leads you out of fear that's what the Bhagavad Gita is all about. Now you've been given a spirit that leads into the kingdom of God and out of fear. Out of these conditions of fearful mortality. And his spirit renews. 
strengthened. So that's St. Paul again, while under the thorn of the flesh. See, that's what my condition was. It was just a thorn in the flesh. But do you have the balls to take that knowledge yourself and use it for yourself? I had to grow up great kahunas, just like I had great kahunas to use the knowledge in the gym. And it worked. I didn't look like Arnold Schwarzenegger, but I was on my way. But God's like, I got a better way. You can obtain your divinity with me and use my wisdom in life. But you have to take it as fact. It is truth. My ways lead to divinity. So that's the understanding of grafting ourselves back to the tree. It's a fight all the time. My fight was, I, I mean, God gave me the spirit. That's why I know the way. And the way was inside me. It doesn't exist. Even though, see, the world too, with its problems in my life, it still doesn't exist. That's why the mages failed. Because in their crippled conditions, life was still bothering them. And they could not find me, the Spirit of God, within them that gives them the comforter. And not only that, but you have to use and grind this knowledge. Just like you used and grind knowledge in the world. It's the same thing. Seek me and only me daily until, again, in 2017, I knew I didn't have God contact, but I was just using the knowledge until God enlightens your consciousness, you have to follow the way, no matter what. This is what my story is about. It isn't about anything but, you know, like overcoming for this gospel, fighting for my life in God. Because also this is the great age of judgment. That's also what he says in this message. John chapter 14, you're going to have to learn to walk in great faith. <laughs> <coughs> Because Mystery Babylon, you see, I didn't know that before. I knew the society was messed up, but Mystery Babylon should get destroyed. This is the last age. So I knew why my, my bum had to get busted by the prophetic stick of God. Because this is the age where the vineyard closes. Matthew 13 again. And the Book of Mormon. This creation is going to get burned and destroyed. And the vineyard, the kingdom of God, his gates are going to close. And this is the last time man has the opportunity to even claim his divinity. So I learned that in the Book of Mormon. That gate is going to close on man before God destroys it. This is the last time. Like the virgin's parable. Well, that virgin's parable. Once that door closes on humanity, there is no more great I am in this realm. That's what the Book of Mormon revealed. God's going to shut the gate permanently. This is the end times. And anybody that doesn't see like the wise virgins, they don't get into the gate <laughs> and meet the master. We're promised this year that there's going to be a rise, a change, a new world order. And if you participate in the new world order, that is the wrath of God in taking his mark. And your soul will burn forever. And you will never be saved. There is no salvation for anybody that takes the mark. So that's your cell phone. And then your cell phone is going to be linked to what? I'll tell you. It's going to be linked to cryptocurrency. And if you want your rent paid, just like me, I didn't get it through others my source was using the wisdom of god god is in the midst of you supply is everyone's biggest struggle with god but they have to use the wisdom of what he's giving us this creation supplies all living entities within it because time and space has a maintenance feature a creation feature and a annihilation feature and if you don't worship those principles properly, you cannot get maintained like the birds. <laughs> you cannot dwell in the secret place of the Most High and overcome your diseases and overcome your mental problems. If you still go to the doctor, see Mystery Babylon and their doctors, 
They only shove pills down your throat and they don't have any knowledge of how to change your diet, your approach in life. So if you keep going to the doctors with your miserable approaches, they're just going to keep shoving those pills down your throat. But I'm a better way. But people probably won't, they don't have the courage. See, this mystery Babylon crushed the courage and just basically the spirituality out of this existence. You know how difficult it is not only to fight the world, and you have no support. No one's giving me thank yous for doing this, and no one ever gave me a thank you at all, but God and enlightenment. And every living entity that exists out in time and space, they don't even matter. Why? Because everybody has to sleep with their own heads on the pillow. That's what also this breaking up. People get to show their true colors. And everybody else told me I sleep very good at home. Well, I, I wasn't really sleeping good, Lord. That's what I said to myself. Everyone's sleeping real good out there, it seems. Oh, very good, Lord. Some of us have to dig up that shovel, Matthew chapter 9, because everyone is sleeping good, it seems, in Mystery Babylon, all fattened up like babies. Just like what the Lord says there, too, in those uh, messages. Fat babies in the church, strolled along with economic advancement. Oh, big time. Shoveling down cash and food, forgetting your everybody else. <laughs> this is a very selfish society. And so people were telling me, yeah, I sleep very good. Okay, fine. I'm just going to sit here and dig up this pearl then. And we'll see who's sitting good in this final age. See, that's what this big hearty har har is all about. Because there's a God and he's coming back whether you like it or not because you're in time and space. And guess who controls time and space? I'll let you guys figure that out. So now there's going to be a big hearty har har. This is the time now where the mortals are going to get crushed just like I was. Their little food in the grocery store ain't going to have it anymore. After this collapse in society, a case of water apparently is going to be $300. Your wife's going to be crying about that. We'll try to satisfy her. Well, that's why the Lord says there ain't going to be any satisfying wives. It's going to be killing each other just for this morsel of food that your corrupt world leaders have been supplying. That's why God tells us not to take thought and not to get involved in the world because the world systems are corrupt. It's very difficult to follow God and fight for this pearl, to fight for your divinity. The whole world doesn't want to do it. That's why you'll get mocked and scoffed, just like I did. Beat, not beaten, but mocked and scoffed. The master gets beaten, whipped, crucified. Same thing. We're going to have to, have to live the crucified life. If the people don't want to follow it in your life, that's why other guys fail. They can't go to the gym and just do it. Just pump the weights no matter what. doesn't matter. See, that's what I already learned in the gym for 10 years going there no matter what if there was 10 feet of snow 15 feet of snow if i was working on night shift day shift afternoon shift you just go and life is the same principle that that earth goes around that sun and all the bums stop but god and you you got to keep on going with prayer even bums in the gym I just sit there and look at broads on their cell phones and, and try to look at them in the mirror. Just sitting there like pylons. Those are the people you're going to have to avoid. The path is straight and narrow. They don't apply knowledge or apply effort. Especially when they sleep with their heads on that pillow. And it's nice and soft because they make a lot of money so you don't have to try hard. Yeah, and then they come over and complain. See, that's the sages. They complain. Life is hard, difficult, but God is that seed in you. And that seed requires great determination to grow. And it's growing out of the rocky and hard places of people's minds. Not only your mind, but others. Especially other people that don't follow the way. The way it was straight and narrow in the gym, it's all the other meatheads sitting around chugging up their orange juice or their chocolate juice. Not lifting weights. Good. I'll go in there and lift it all for you. It's the same thing with God. Good. You don't want to play with God? I'll take all the enlightenment in this age. It just seems like I'm the only one grabbing the pearl of great price. Fine, Lord. Because I was a... See this greed? You're in material creation. 
You gotta transform this greed into great determination. And there's great determination for those that seek me and only me. Why? Because you, 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 this pearl, this promise, God's son in the midst of you, that now lives your life. And not only that, but it's the afterwards. And not only that, there's also this age that we live in. <laughs> so God's protection, the prophecies coming true. It's going to take great determination to push past the weeds, you see. The path is straight and narrow, but the cares of this world, you have to push past the weeds yourself. If there's no one there for you, you're going to have to be your own determination. You're going to have to be your own Rocky. You're going to have to be your own trainer where he tells Rocky to get up, you bum. If you can't do that yourself, that's why there's other guys like Joel Goldsmith. He's a good trainer. You could keep on. If, see, if you're too weak, mentally, physically, that's what the apostles are for. You go to them like donkeys looking for some bread and water. And the bread of water is their words, their wisdom. So if you're weak and pathetic and you can't do these things yourself, you go to a Joel Goldsmith on YouTube and you listen to about 10 hours worth of wisdom and knowledge. Soak it in your head and use it that's what the apostles are for for the weak mentally that can't do nothing they get taught how and they graft themselves back onto the tree but see for me that's what the joel was when i didn't have anybody i had a computer at home and i had youtube and i had one spiritual teacher joel goldsmith i didn't deviate from teachers from principles of training either you can't deviate off the way so that's another thing. You're given this principle and you can't deviate. And I was given a good trainer that I didn't deviate from. So building up this consciousness, you don't have any wisdom yourself. It takes like years of grinding this knowledge. Just like it takes years of grinding any occupation or art and craft. It takes years. But you can do it not with your own will. So it's not by might, not by power. I live in you, yet not I. You take up the great name of the great I am and his wisdom and knowledge. And it will lead you around to these empty experiences. It'll lead you down to dark alleyways. Why? Because it's trying to get you out of mortal consciousness. It's trying to get you into me, into prayer. And the fact that this reality isn't real. You're going to have to take my knowledge. If you don't then you fail the way that's what I mean this talk's been all about mostly people have been failing there's very few people as he says in Matthew uh, 7 verse 13 very few people the road they traveled not actually been saved and got in because they cried about their experience they didn't follow the way enough they were still attached to their to their whatever they didn't they, they just didn't take up enough wisdom or they didn't know enough wisdom they were insufficient for the time. There's no excuse in this time. I mean, you have a computer, all the knowledge in the world, but people don't use it for that. Their idolatry, they just take pictures of themselves. Their useless, ugly faces, getting us all into the heat of judgment day in a pathetic society that's crumbling. That's what people use the technology for, their own miserable selves. And that's why they fail the way, they fail God, God not maybe here in my life, they have all these problems, questions, and whatever. It's how you use things in life too. So if you don't use like the, the wisdom that's been around forever, then no wonder there's a lot of crying, not understanding. Especially in this age of World War III and great judgment upon mankind. You can't avoid World War III. That's going to happen. That's not only what the Lord says, but that's also what man says himself. Vladimir Putin is ready for that NWO. That's the latest in the news. He said it himself. This is unbelievable. He says it himself. The NWO. Just like I posted on my Facebook. These clowns in George Bush's day, they're setting it up for the NWO. America, oh America, you're a sacrifice. That's all you are. That's why the Ukraines, 
a freaking dummy over there with the biggest guilty look on his face has been stealing and sucking money away from America. Bill after bill, $8 trillion here, $8 billion there. Just funnel it all to Ukraine over the past two years. Why have they been doing that? The Lord says they've been setting up their new world order. Ukraine and Russia are just good old friends. It's a great deception out in the world. That's what war really is, deception, chaos. People don't know what war is. The Americans are just as evil and working with this world conspiracy. Biden is giving all the money away, all the oil away, to his good old friends, the Russians, to build up the new world order and their electrical currency, their one government. That's not even a conspiracy theory. Man has been saying this openly for 50, 60 years at least, and it's since in Caesar's Rome. This is what George Bush said openly in the 70s, a new world order. This is all open. This is not a conspiracy theory. The governments are destroying people, sucking up all of their money, and making not even a middle class anymore. Now you're just lucky if you live in a tiny home these days, barely making it. You know, you know why? It's because of that not taking thought part. There's still the material nature you're bounded in, the illusionary energy. The Lord can free you from the illusionary energy of you thinking you're a human being in a human world. I have to overcome that sense too when things were scary. Yeah, they're very scary. Especially this money part. Oh well, you gotta sacrifice. Sacrifice before it's too late because this beast system, right? You're not gonna have money like you used to for the past 30, 40 years blowing cash on whatever. This society's crumbling and coming to an end. That's the gospel truth. And following the way is the only way you can survive. That's why Jesus Christ came, to save us from this catastrophe. He is the Savior, away from this whatever's going to happen, this judgment by the rulers of matter. <laughs> <clears throat> While the rulers of this world, your Vladimir Putin's, they're already telling you, your Xi Ping, the Chinese guy, oh, he wants to invade Taiwan. He's very sneaky, that's what the Lord says. He's using stealth. Stealth and deception is critical, critical in this age. They're waiting to pounce on Taiwan. And then when that pouncing happens, that's when the Russians and the United States are going to have their fake war. But the Americans are going to be sacrificed. World War Three, nukes, everything. Yeah, a sacrifice. It's not a catastrophe. It's just people have been misled. They've been deceived. That's the, <laughs> that's the idea of not being smart. Not being smart enough, trusting your rulers, trusting this world. You want to trust them when they start dropping bombs on you? Just to make their world, their new world order? That's what you get for not trusting me. That's what God's message is all about. That's what you get now for not trusting me. You get this new world order, and now you're going to go through hell on earth. Just like the Christ went on hell on the cross. That's what this is all about. They're going to get poured out the wrath of God that Jesus Christ saves us from. So if you didn't get under that umbrella, that shelter of the wrath, then you're going to be one of those living entities just crying about your, uh, your wife and your money and your whatever while the whole world is crumbling. And you're going to have to go to your government and get the artificial intelligence to feed you, clothe you, and house you. Because you didn't take up the wisdom. And it says in the message too that many of the mortals are going to perish and die forever. Away from the kingdom of God. Away from their immortal souls. It's not a shame or a catastrophe because people think they're smart these age. They got their smartphones. They think they're so smart too. That's what you get for being proud, haughty, egotistical. When you're a creation you don't even know about. Your world, your world, your world rulers are looking to destroy you at every second of the day, and now they're propagating World War Three. As it says, put trust in me, take no thought of this world, because Mystery Babylon is going to get destroyed, and maybe you could miss out on your chance of enlightenment. So I hope that helps.
Take care.